So normally, what is my understanding about the sales force is normally sales force is the CRM, right? Sales force will be providing like SaaS services, as you told. Sales force will provide so many services coming to SaaS services, software as a service. We are all working in a sales force org, right? As admins or as developers, we are working on a sales force org. That means as admins will do the configurations, as the developers will do the customizations, right? So that means. Salesforce is a CRM tool. By using the CRM tool, we can maintain the customer interactions from start to end. That means, like whenever the uh, customer is getting into our business, after the after customer getting uh, like involved in our business, whether like we can track over the customer details and uh, uh, like what is their contact details. and uh, whether that customer will purchase our product or not if it is a sales or services or whatever it is mean uh, they have uh, involved our, in our business or not like they that customer is will have will happy with our product or not like is there any complaints about our product or any feedback related to our product like that like from the start to end that of the business from the end of the business what will be the complete process we can track by using this crm so normally sales force crm will be useful very useful for the business to improve their profitability why i am telling to improve the profitability means previously uh, whenever a person is started starting a business means definitely they have to build up some servers and also websites for their business right so to set up their business uh, to their websites uh, like they need some server space and they need some hardware requirements and software requirements to achieve those things so those websites and all and also they have to recruit some software developers and like some uh, professionals to maintain those servers and websites right but as after sales was coming into the market so it's a on demand and cloud based crm right so that means we can remove all those websites and all we just subscribe those uh, sales for crm and we can get all the features which is available in our websites and also portals so that's why uh, nowadays uh, sales force is the number one crm tool and also it is very business friendly they can do any type of customizations what, like based on the business requirements they can do any type of customizations and also the uh, sales force have a point and click tools that means admin part so like 50% of the thing which we can achieve through the Uh, coding we can achieve with the point and click tools like we can create uh, like fields and also objects and we can save the records we can create the records we can create the formula fields and validation rules we can do many more by using this point and click tools so this is the brief introduction about normally salesforce is for increase the profitability of the business did you understand what is the salesforce as i told you we have two parts right we can divide these salesforce uh, like this salesforce crm uh, functionalities as a two parts first one is the salesforce admin and second part is the salesforce development so as we have already discussed salesforce admin part is i told you right creating uh, like uh, without coding how much we can achieve by using this point and click tools that will come under admin so what is the actual responsibilities of salesforce admin means they can do the configuration like creating objects fields and relationships creating relationships and uh, creating uh, like uh, editing our page layouts and creating the record types like that and also permission so every org definitely they have some security and also permissions right so by using roles and permissions and profiles and permission sets we can set up those object level and we can uh, field level securities to the users next coming to the security security means every organization definitely need a security without security uh, we can all like anyone doesn't trust us right so that's why salesforce have some security features by using owds role hierarchies and uh, sharing setting and also like uh, this manual sharing we have enforced some security settings to our org by using the security settings we can protect the data of salesforce so like what whoever the whoever subscribes the salesforce uh, features so we can protect those data by using the salesforce security system next means we can do the user management user management means we can create like we can add the users we can deactivate the users we can assign roles and we can assign profiles based on their uh, functionalities and based on their roles 
so that is something called user magic like password uh, password resetting and leaving the users and uh, sometimes a uh, user have some uh, difficulties uh, in accessing objects like that so we have some uh, like uh, tickets related to users like i don't have access to this uh, object i don't have access to this fleet uh, sometimes we'll get requests as please remove this access to this object to the users like that user management things we can do next thing is data management so data management is something how you can uh, create the records and upload the records and update the records and like upset the records delete the records those things are called data management so we don't have in a salesforce we don't have one record or two record right so salesforce orgs will deal with millions of records so we have to upload uh, like uh, thousands of records at a time so for that we have a data loader and some extension called salesforce inspectors and data import wizard those are available so by using those tools we can uh, we can manage our the data management tools these are the brief introduction about our salesforce admin part these are the salesforce admin like basic salesforce admin responsibility like after that we have some case management and case assignments and email templates and automation will be there like uh, process automation for like work flows and process builders and lightning flows by using these tools we can achieve the automation through our salesforce admin part right so these are the main advantages of so just now we have discussed the normal uh, responsibilities of salesforce admin so now let's come come to the salesforce development so like anyone let me know like what is this salesforce development normally what is your view on development what are the things we will do using this development using development actually we do things which an admin cannot do like if there is a complex requirement from offline uh, which cannot be achieved uh, via this tool on on salesforce then we use coding yes so right when we cannot achieve some scenario some complex business scenario through the point and click tools means we can go for the coding but but normally what is the salesforce development mean so yeah we have so many features in the admin part is there no doubt at all but definitely every business have a different functionality and different requirement right so salesforce given some uh, features some uh, some features that we can do customization they have provided some standard features we can use that features right but if you want to if you don't like that or if you want to change those requirements or if you want to change those features means we can do the customizations in our org so for that salesforce uh, like i introduced this salesforce development part that means by using the salesforce development we can do the customizations customization means we can modify our salesforce org based on the our requirement so so do the customizations we need some language some programming language right so that language is the apex programming language so like different websites will be there so to to develop those websites in order to run those functionalities back end some uh, some programming languages will be running right maybe it's the java or python or something or some c so like that so they uh, different websites have some different uh, web not only website website different portals and different websites have some programming languages like uh, uh, like html and javascript and uh, react js and node js like that different uh, languages will be there so like that to do the customizations in our salesforce platform so what is the programming language we are going to use means that programming language is called apex programming language okay so apex so triggers triggers also it's part of apex but it will it will have some different functionalities so i'll tell you uh, when we go when we get into triggers but apex and triggers are both same then ara also elements so what is the difference about this apex and also this ara and lwc anyone any idea like what is this apex apex also programming language lwc also programming language where will be using this apex and where will be using this lwc so let's see like i told you like some complex business scenarios already you people know uh, already worked as a admin right so you have multiple scenarios you know like all the objects and you are very well known about those objects so i'll tell you some scenario uh, for example i want uh, you know right roll up summaries you have idea about roll up summaries right 
no yeah so like we have a some limitation like we can create like i think 25 roll up summaries that's the limit of uh, per object but object we can only create 25 roll up summaries in a parent object but i need more uh, roll up summaries i want to create more roll up but as for the salesforce limitation i just i can only create a 25 roll up summaries but if i want a more ways i can create those things by using apex background it will process in a background and it will for it will show show you some details uh, like it will pro- it will work on a background so based on that coding it will pop up the value and showcase in your ui so like that it will work on a background for example i'll tell you some other scenario whenever uh, my account rating is hot i want to Uh, update uh, like i want to create a contact record for, related to that account so that thing i can achieve by using apex so in a back back that is something called back end development that means so if you want to achieve some business functionalities and business logic means uh, business requirement means we can go for this apex and also triggers that means it will work on a background and will and uh, it will showcase the showcase those details it will work on a background so that is something about that is something about back end development to the back end development will go for this apex and also this triggers so what is this rr lwc means if you want to design your front end for example let's see this is our i believe you all have this uh, dev org right so that's why i I'm not uh, like creating this devorgs. You all have all uh, this de- devorgs, right? Yes. Yes. So, for example, let's go to this home page. So this is this is some card. So this is images. Uh, like how how we can we have designed this uh, UI like this front end. the user interface how we have created you see the buttons are aligned that there is some uh, like uh, card will be there so different card will be there and the uh, images will be embedded in this card so it will be a table will be there this it will be in a structured format right so it will be uh, for the for the user interface to access this it will be it, if i click this one please this object manager it will lead to some other page like how we can achieve those things by using this front end development only we can achieve so here there is some icon will be there here some icon will be there it will be some aligned and table format so how we can uh, uh, like achieve this user interface means by using this ara and also lwc ara and lwc for the front end like how the designs will be there so that is the little interaction about aura and lwc when we get into this uh, uh, lwc part i'll tell you like brief uh, like expl- i ca- i can explain completely about these things about uh, like what is this front end all as of now you just know that like apex and triggers for the back end development and also this aura and lwc for the front end development front end means the user interface how we can design the user interface for that not only for the designing purpose lwc by using lwc we can fetch those records and we can like uh, we can de- deal with the data also but well, like most most importantly anything anything will be performing that will be completely the final output will be uh, in, a, in a in a user interface only we can showcase those in a user interface only that's why this lwc and ara will be uh, responsible for the front end development this apex and triggers will be responsible for the back end development that means uh, business logic to achieve the business logic we will be using this apex and triggers so let's get into our uh, first session is uh, like about back end development salesforce development we can divide it as a two first one is the back end and second one is the uh, second one is the front end first we will like how our uh, course will be made first we will discuss about the apex because without apex we cannot Uh, directly jump into LWC. If you know the Apex, then only you can learn LWC. There is an interconnection between this Apex and LWC. So that's the reason. First, we'll be learning Apex and Triggers and Ape- like this development. After that, we'll, ju- we'll jump into the Lightning Web Components. The first thing, what is mean by Apex? So 
the, this will, this will be an interview question only so apex is a programming language used by the salesforce developers by using apex language we can do the customization and we can do the we can achieve the complex business logic in a salesforce platform apex will be only working in a salesforce platform like some other uh, it, like uh, it, it it will only work in a salesforce platform not in a other platform and apex is the world's first uh like cloud based programming language cloud based because we can write this without internet can you write this coding you cannot right because salesforce itself we cannot we cannot access salesforce without internet right we can only access through the internet only. so like that apex is the first cloud based programming language and it also it is strongly typed that means uh like variable cannot exist without a data type like when we discuss about the variables i'll let you know what is the strongly type so as of now just know like it's a strongly type and object oriented programming language object oriented programming means in apex everything will be in a classes so we can include all of our variables and methods in a classes and we can whenever we want we can access those classes so that concept is called object oriented programming language so there is some uh, like uh, there is some features will be there i'll tell you when we get into this uh, apex like in a later classes we can discuss what is this oops what is the features of oops and all as of now just know that it's a strongly typed and object oriented programming language and it is very similar to java like uh, if you know the java means definitely you can understand apex easily because this apex is derived from the java only most of the syntax is very similar to java and uh, normally salesforce developers will use the apex programming language to create custom uh, and like logics custom logics and also to uh, to create system events and to enable the button clicks and also record updates for that we'll be using this apex programming language so this is the brief introduction about apex next is so what is the features of apex so like as of now we have seen what is the apex but what are the things we can do by using apex means uh, like whatever the things we can do by using admin we can do by using the code that so by using apex so you can create a records manually right like in admin like by using if, I, if you click if it is a account object means you click new button you can create those record a new account record already if any account record will will be there means if you click that record and if you edit that record you can upload update those records so you can you can create the record you can update the record you can delete the record uh, you, these things we can perform manually in a uh, like in a point and click tools right same thing we can perform in a uh, apex programming language also like we can create the record we can update the record we can delete the record by using apex programming language but what is the difference between these uh, manually creating and this apex programming language means if you want to if you want to like if you want to create multiple records means we have to go for this data loader at all but by using apex by using uh, bulk dml operations we can do those those things that means we can create we can re- 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 update the record we can delete the record by using apex also and also um, we can easily test uh, if you write some coding or all means we have unit testing we have some features called unit unit testing by using unit testing we can easily write the test cases and we can ch- we can uh, like uh, validate those test cases and also uh, like there is a feature called in a salesforce that you know that what is the code coverage of uh, salesforce uh, salesforce test cases yeah 75% that means if you if you reach the 75% means you can easily uh, you can deploy the code into our uh, higher ranks right so like that we can perform those unit testing and we can uh, perform those uh, coverages and all so like here itself we can check so when you deploy it it will be easy uh, when you work on a production and work environment the code won't be broke so like that we have uh, like unit testing features will be there Uh, it will be easy testing uh, so we have unit testing so that it will be can easily test those uh, test scenarios and we can easily deploy those to our higher ops 
and also it can uh, upgrade automatically you cannot perform any updations at all whenever a new release will be coming so it will update automatically you cannot perform any any updations at all and also um, we can it has a like record locking mechanism built in record locking mechanism so that means uh, for example if you are uh, if you, you have any idea like submit for approval and all is, is that functionality submit for approval functionality in admin approval process yeah uh, yeah no approval so, process yeah any record if you add those button for submit for approval means we can uh, submit that uh, record up records to the approval to our our higher managers right Correct. right then right then they approve we means of the hierarchy ha huh, right how many levels of approval we have to go through right right so like that once you provide for the approval means that the actual record which you have uh, provided for the approval that record got locked like do you have any idea about it you like no one can able to edit those records i have heard of it but not tried it ah okay so that is something called built in record ba- like a mechanism why this ta- this type of things enabled means uh, like when you are uh, going to approve like if anyone update uh, like if anyone try to update uh, something in that record means so that will like that will give you some conflicts right so it will be like override of the actual data so that's the reason we have a built in record locking mechanism not only for the submit for approval whenever we are performing any operation to the code means or any updations or anything means that record will got locked after the transaction only that will re- release so like that there is some uh, built in record lock mechanism will be there in a salesforce that that is also very important one of the most important features of apex and also it is automatically updated and we can easily test it and also it is strongly type to language that means without data type a variable cannot exist i will tell you when we discuss about the variables i'll tell you what is this um, strongly type language what is this data type variables and all and also it is java like syntax and also easy to use that is the features of apex next is this question you know when should developer choose apex means like we have already known when we cannot achieve some scenarios by using the point and click tools then we can go for this uh, apex program and when we then we can go to the apex and we can uh, code accordingly so what is the syntax like complete salesforce what is the syntax you can find me first one is a variable declaration so variable declaration method declaration and classes creation right those things you can find able to find next thing is so fuel query socket query that means how we can retrieve the data from the database like by using socket queries we can retrieve the data and we can save those details in some list or a map or set whatever we need we can save those details socket queries mostly for how we can fill the database how we can retrieve the database what we want like you have idea about socket queries right yes yes oh yes i have it yes socket queries variable declaration we have like uh, variable declaration method declaration classes and all we have and a socket queries how can how we can do the socket queries that we have and also loop statement we have like that for example i want to perform because i uh, here salesforce have not only one record or two record salesforce have billions of record for example i want to perform some operation some update operation on a 100 records means i want to perform those operations again and again and again right first one record is updated means next i'll come back there and i i'll i come back first position and i have to update the another record like that we have to upload we have to loop those uh, records so that's why i i have to know this looping statement loop statement i have to so after that flow control statement flow control statement means uh, in some situations i have to take a decision that means my rating is hot i want to perform some operation my rating is cold i want to perform some operations like that we have uh, some decision making will be there right so in our scenarios based on the scenarios only we work we have some scenarios that where we have to make a decisions not only about this uh, like we uh, like uh, different scenarios will be there for example my i have if if the customer entered the email means i have to 
like if the email is uh, not not empty i have to update those email details uh, account email details into contact like that so if you want to perform if you want to take some decision means then this flow control statements will be used and also tml statements tml statement nothing but data manipulation uh, language that means uh, like records creation so records updation are uh, uh, upset operations and also delete operations so bulk operations how we can perform that you can able to uh, see in our tml statements so apex syntax completely completely uh, only these things will be available in apex syntax variable declaration declaration socle queries and loop statements flow control statements and tml statements so these are the most important topics available in apex so after that different things will be different concept will be there there also you can again and again you can able to find those classes and also methods how we can pass the parameters to that method how we can call those methods and how we can call those variables and uh, how we can retrieve the data again and again you can only find this concept only. complete apex you can only find this concept if you know this concept you can easily understand the code and you can easily write the code so the apex syntax contain only these concepts okay so this is the brief interaction and also overview about our uh, salesforce uh, development part like apex as of now any doubts please let me know ah uh, no that's not clear is it clear right is it understandable yes for me it is oh. okay fine so we have a uh, eight minutes okay let's let's uh, come back to our uh, salesforce app like so we we'll, as of now we have seen we have discussed this uh, customizations customization customization right where we have where we can do our customization any idea where developer we can console. yes set up developer console okay before getting into dev- this development we have to understand some other important concept called uh, like sandboxes do you idea do you have any idea about sandbox Ah, uh, like what is the copy of the? It's a copy of environment. So if you have to do any, uh, see, uh, your client has a requirement, then you have to make any changes on the sandbox. You test it, and then you deploy it in production. Because production yes. is uh, if live you make any problem. mistake on product, yeah, it's a live environment. Okay. Yes, right. So production is a live environment, so that's why we cannot do any uh, like make changes in a production environment. For that, we have a sandbox. Sandbox is a copy of the production. That means whatever the objects, whatever the like complete things will be there. That it's exactly the exact replica of a production. So we can do the changes in our. You can we can do the customizations in our dev org. Uh, sorry, there's something called dev org or like that. People are calling that as a dev org or sandboxes like that. We will do our changes in our sandboxes. So we'll do our changes in our sandboxes. Then we can deploy those things into our higher org, whether it's a UAT or like that. We cannot directly like deploy into production org. So normally we have some process. Like first we will do in our orgs in our sandboxes. After that we will. Uh, like uh, uh, deploy into our higher org like, like we will we will uh, higher org and we will uh, like we will ask the qa to test those things right they they tested and it will be all fine means then they will deploy into the production org so this is the process so for that companies will use different uh, tools like ci cd pipeline that that means like they will like they they cannot Like what is the deployment tools we'll be using normally? Any idea? Like what is the deployment? If you want to deploy from one org to other org, means what is the deployment tools we'll be using? Shangal, then you use Chainset. Chainset and also? Ah, uh, Chainset can do. Ah. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I think Chainset can do. Right. Okay. Any other third-party tools we'll be using for the deployment? Okay, 
so i'll tell you so normally visual studio any idea about visual studio code vs code uh, yes we have vs code yeah i've heard of it but not used it ha vs code is like we won't write any code and actually as per the apex and triggers we will mostly will be using our uh, writing our code in a developer console itself because here we can write and we can easily test here itself and uh, like uh, we can deploy it right so that's the reason for the apex and triggers we mostly use the developer console but if you get into if you get, getting into this lwc component we cannot write lwc code into developer console that's why we need a visual studio code so by using visual studio code we can deploy our code from one arc to other arc this is also deployment tool but but normally in a big big companies how this uh, codes will be working is first they will they'll have some jira jira board have a jira tickets once the jira uh, tickets was created once we will pick those tickets we will create create some branches so that branches so that branches will be open in the github that will be created in the github so by using that branches whatever the changes will do we'll do all those things in our visual code visual studio code and we will deploy those codes into the branches that branches so after that uh, this github will be uh, connected with the jenkins there is some uh, some deployment tool called this jenkins Jen- that Jen- yeah. any idea jenkins yes yes we use yeah. jenkins yes yeah. yes so that jenkins will create some build and they will validate whatever the code we have written like that will validate whether uh, whether all the code will be uh, all the test cases will be covered or not like uh, the validate the test case coverages will be perfect or not like that they will do the validation and they will if if all will be successful then it will merge those thing into our dev org higher org they will deploy into higher org so that's the uh, way of uh, deploying like different companies will be following different tools so i'm just telling like my view like well, this will be uh, helpful when you uh, uh, like when you are att- attend any interview because uh, you don't know you have not worked in a developer environment right so that's why they if they ask you like what type of tools you will be using like what is the process of deploying means it will be helpful okay but the tickets will be created in a jira so after that so when you create a branch that branch will be created in a github so you will do your uh, code in your visual studio code you can commit your code to our github so then based on uh, if you commit the code to the github github is connected to the jenkins 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 will create a build and they will validate your code if you are uh, if the validation will be successful you can merge your code into higher org so after the approvals after the approval after the uh, like pr approvals or and all you can come merge your code into dev org so that's the process of a deployment 